conservative new media viewers, Jeremy Lin fans around the world, LA Lakers fans around the world. It's me, PFV, the quiet NBA expert, Paul F. Villarreal, and we are here to discuss the Lakers' 93-85 to victory tonight against the Detroit Pistons in Los Angeles, California at Staples Center. What happened in this game, what happened was that the Lakers were down by one point in this game at halftime, and then they took control in the third quarter because Detroit only scored 11 points. The Lakers scored 18. That gave them a seven-point edge in the quarter, and it gave them a six-point edge in the game hitting into the fourth and final quarter where they were able to hold on and outscore Detroit in that quarter as well. Let's go over some stats quickly. First, from the losing side, <clears throat> excuse me, Greg Monroe, 24 points, 9 rebounds. Andre Drummond, 14 points, 21 rebounds. Contavious Caldwell-Pope, 15 points. Jody Meeks, former Laker, 12 points himself. Turning to the Lakers, all five Lakers starters scored in double figures tonight, led by Jordan Hill with 16 points and three rebounds, Wesley Johnson, 13 points, three rebounds, Jordan Clarkson, 10 points, four rebounds, eight assists, and Jordan only had one turnover. He was really played some good basketball tonight, particularly in the first half. He didn't shoot well, but I love the assist to turnover ratio. That's That's really good to see. Among the bench, Carlos Boozer, 10 points. Ed Davis, <clears throat> excuse me, 13 points and six rebounds. Even though Ed only played 18 minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, because he had four fouls, which didn't help his case. Jeremy Lin, who I can say fairly comfortably was the, the player of this game for the Lakers. He really carried the Lakers in the third and fourth quarters, particularly late in the third and all of the fourth which he played the entire fourth, and Jordan Clarkson did not play in the fourth after Jordan picked up his fourth foul late in the third, and he never got back into the game because Jeremy was playing well, in my opinion. 12 points, 28 minutes played, 1 of 4 shooting from the field, 1 of 1 three-pointers, 9 of 12 from the free-throw line, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 1 steal, no block shots, two turnovers, one personal foul. His plus minus was zero. And look, the first thing that stands out about this was that he only shot four times from the field, but he got 12 free throw attempts. Now, a couple of those are down the stretch when the game was over and Detroit was trying to slow the game down. This is an extremely efficient way to play. You don't need to shoot a lot or score a lot to affect the game. And you don't have to shoot from the field to get points. You can draw fouls, which is what Jeremy did and what he's very good at doing. And I think as his game develops in the future, you will see him do this even more, where he will look to draw more fouls, shoot the ball less, and be even more efficient than he is becoming. As I mentioned on Twitter, Jeremy's PER number will go up after tonight. There's no question about that. I believe he came into this game with a 15.4 PER, and it's going up. I don't know how much, but it's going to go up. The Lakers played, I thought they played well in this game. I thought they played cohesively. I thought they played as a team. They had their moments, a little up and down. Detroit, I don't know what's happened to Detroit. They were playing great even like a week ago. Now they, they can't seem to win. Uh, part of it, I, actually a lot of it might be because Reggie Jackson's not been playing that well, at least not in this game and a couple other recent games. Jeremy had two turnovers, and both of them were flukes. So neither of them were even that big of a deal. And let me just add to his statistics a couple other statistics. He had at least five blown assists. He had at least four assists for fouls, where he passes the ball to someone and they get fouled before they can score. And he also had two hockey assists. So he could have had another five assists in this game easily uh, that he didn't get. So uh, I love the way he played in this game. And I'll talk more about that in a second. He was extremely effective in the second half, but he played smart in the first half. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. There's a lot of fans that were not happy with how things were going for him and with uh, and with Jordan Clarkson in the first half. 
And what I said on Twitter was, hey, just just be calm. He's playing smart. He's not trying to force the action. Let it play itself out. And in the second half, particularly once Jordan Clarkson got the four fouls, Jeremy went into overdrive. And what I like about him now is he's he's managing his energy better. If you notice in the past with Jeremy, he'd be tired on back-to-backs. He'd get tired during the game. He'd just get worn down. And the reason for that is because he plays so fast. He plays at such a high speed level that it wears you out quicker than guys who play slow. And so if you play like that, you've got to kind of figure out times during the game to take a break. Let your team do some things. You kind of pull back. In the first half of this game, Jordan Clarkson was rolling, and Jeremy knew it. So Jeremy just kind of let Jordan run the show, and Jeremy just he made some passes, played defense, but didn't try to do too much. And he didn't force anything. I think through the first half he had one shot. And as I said, a lot of people were unhappy about that on Twitter. A lot of Jeremy Lin fans were like down, and they think, oh, this is going to be the third game in a row that doesn't look very good. Although I, I think Jeremy's played well. In, in the the last two games coming into tonight, well, if you thought he was in a slump, the slump's over. And I can tell you, he wasn't in any slump. He wasn't in any kind of a slump. Now, let's go over quickly what was going on leading up to the game. We, it was mentioned recently that Byron Scott was probably going to change the starting lineup. Obviously, he did that last game and continuing into this game, which is Wes Johnson and Tarek Black into the starting lineup, Ryan Kelly and Robert Sacre out of the starting lineup. I got into a discussion with various trolls on Twitter after the last game, and we know that the Jeremy Lin doubters were, were back in full force after the last after the last two games. We knew that was going to happen, but it doesn't make any difference. Now, I was engaging these guys, honestly, because I was bored and it was fun, but it's don't get caught up with them. You don't have to prove anything to them, and they'll they be hiding tonight, as we know. Kobe is back at the games. I guess he's back at the games because Byron Scott asked him to come back, so we got that information today. Um, yeah, so, and I also, I said to fans before tonight's game, I think, and certainly during tonight's game, especially the first half, don't be... Don't get all shaken up by what happened in the last two games against Memphis and Dallas. Both of those teams play excellent defense, and they particularly play the type of defense that makes it difficult for Jeremy. They have shot blockers. They clog up the middle of of the paint, so it's harder for Jeremy to drive. They'll double-team Jeremy. I know Dallas was double-teaming him coming off of screens. And... I know Dallas will focus on Jeremy. They know to focus on him to slow him down. Rick Carlisle's mentioned that before. So the the concept of taking what the defense gives you is central to Linsanity Prime mindset. And so if the defense is focusing on you or if the defense has a certain setup that makes it hard for you to to excel like they've got a really good shot blocker and you like to drive to the basket they stack the paint with defenders which makes it hard for you to to drive to the basket then don't force it then if it's geared to you then somebody else on your team is probably going to be in a position to succeed because it's not geared to them if the paint is being stacked then pass it out to shooters for open shots If there's a shot blocker in there, well, again, take jump shots or pass it to taller players who have a better chance of success against a shot blocker. This is what Jeremy's done. He hasn't been passive. It's People just need to to remove from their mind the idea that Jeremy has to put up pinball 
mega stats or else he's not playing well or else he's he's being passive. Now, there's a lot of different ways to succeed. There's a lot of different ways to, to get the job done, particularly as a point guard. The knock on Jeremy Lin, the criticism of Jeremy Lin, or among the criticisms is he shoots too much, he dribbles the ball too much, looking for his own shot. He doesn't involve his teammates enough. Uh, he's too impatient. He turns the ball over too much. He doesn't play like a traditional point guard. He doesn't want to pass. He wants to score. Well, he's changing that. If you're him and you're going to become a free agent and that's the, the, the rap sheet on you, what do you want to do? You want to change it. You want to show teams. You want to show coaches. You want to show general managers that you've progressed in your game and you can play a different way. That's what Linsanity Prime is all about. And it also happens to be the case that Linsanity Prime is more efficient than Linsanity is or was. I'm, Jordan Clarkson took 12 shots tonight. He played the same number of minutes as Jeremy Lin, and Jeremy Lin had a higher efficiency number than Jordan Clarkson did. So don't get caught up in the flashy stuff. Being efficient means being selective. You have to choose when to assert and when to pull back. And a big part of being efficient is knowing when to pull back. Jeremy, to be very honest with you, and I've talked about this before in terms of him being stubborn or wanting to play Jeremy ball, meaning he's Mike D'Antoni point guard making all decisions constantly. He hasn't been good at knowing how to pull back. Now he's learning how to pull back. And that is the next step in his evolution as a player. And it's 100% critical for him to become what he wants to become. He's got to be able to do that. And that's what he's doing. That's why I don't care if he doesn't score anything or he doesn't shoot at all thing I'm looking at most games with him is how many turnovers did he have? Did he sh move the ball? Did he play within the system? Because he needs to be able to do that. And if he can do that, then he can play for any team as a starter or whatever role he has and play at a high level. And that's what he's doing now. What he did tonight, he let Jordan do his thing first half and Jordan was feeling good and and doing well Jordan was shooting and scoring pretty well and he was moving the ball well so Jeremy just kind of stepped back and basically played a shooting guard who was just kind of an observer and then in the second half Jordan started to struggle a little bit he got into foul trouble and Jeremy said okay now's my time boom that's how you want to do it Jeremy cannot come in and try to run things every single game, at least not in this circumstance. And to be honest with you, he's not going to have that in a whole bunch of circumstances, particularly if you're on good teams. If you're on good teams with very good players, he's not going to be able to do that because a coach isn't going to let him do that. So that's why it's important to, to find other ways to succeed. And that's what he's doing. Now, I know a lot of people... A lot of fans, they think, well, geez, if he's not putting up stats, then nobody's going to take him or he's going to be a career backup. No, no. The people around the NBA, the scouts, the general managers, the coaches, they understand basketball better than fans do. So they can appreciate nuances in people's games better than most fans can. They're not just measuring guys based on statistics, measuring on how they play. Are they mature in how they play? Do they understand what to do and how to do it and when to do it? And I'm telling you right now, Jeremy Lin's stock is going through the roof right now in those categories. It doesn't matter what his stats are. And to be honest, his stats are going up. His PER is going up. 
his turnovers are going down. He's showing the league that he can play traditional point guard and fit in with an offense rather than being the whole offense, which is what the point guard is, the Mike D'Antoni system. And that's enormous. It's enormous, and it's happening. So it's just great to see. It's just great to see. Now, as KP Chan mentioned and other people have mentioned, Jeremy can't come out. and He can't get into arguments with Byron Scott. And it, it's good that he stands up for himself. But the truth is, look, now we've got 19 games left. Your point is not to come out and argue with the coaches and, and make your make your stand. There's a good chance Jeremy's out of L.A. And so you want to be chill, be professional, as he was in Houston. Remember, he was professional. Omer Ashik was pouting and sitting out games. You don't want to do that. Jeremy's making his case on the court. And the case is getting clearer and clearer. This is, what, the 11th straight game of Linsanity Prime Mindset. This is who he is and who he is becoming. And it's getting more solidified in his mind. And it'll show up on the videotape that the, the personnel people watch. I, I couldn't. I'm thrilled. I was thrilled in the first half of this game. Because he, it's, it's the approach. He's taking the correct approach in how he's playing. And that's everything follows from that. Okay. Now, he has had more opportunities since the All-Star break. Why? Because Ronnie Price has been out most of the time, and Nick Young has been out most of the time. Has that helped? Absolutely it's helped. Now, of course, we know the anybody but Jeremy candidate of the moment is, of course, Jordan Clarkson. And the people that don't want Jeremy to succeed or they, hey, Jordan Clarkson's overshadowing Jeremy. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. That's like, that's like simplistic narrative for like an elementary school kid. Anybody that's watching the games, no, that's not happening. I mean, Jeremy Lin is like a top 15 PER in the NBA since the All-Star game. Uh, Jordan Clarkson doesn't. So that's just, that's silliness. That's Don't don't get caught up in that type of stuff. Uh, also, two more things before the game got started. One, the Lakers signed Jabari Brown, shooting guard, to a 10-day contract. Uh, Jabari Brown was with the Lakers in summer league and for training camp. He was like one of the last guys that got cut. I don't remember everything about him. Uh, I don't think he's going to have any real effect on the team. He's probably being signed because they need more bodies in practice, would be my guess. Um, so that's. I just want to mention that. Manny Pacquiao is now training in Los Angeles at the wild card gym. And I really hope that Jeremy Lin and his team gets to go and meet Pacquiao because Pacquiao and Lin are fans of each other and they wanted to meet before in New York, but they couldn't. So I hope that Jeremy will get a chance, like a day or something to go check out Pacquiao. If I know Pacquiao is, uh, you know, it's a serious training for the Mayweather fight, but um, hopefully he'll get a chance to do that. That'd be really cool. Okay, I'm not going to go through full quarter by quarter. I'll just go over a couple select plays that, that uh, came up to me um, when I was watching the game. Okay, let's see. Yeah, he was – Jeremy was having a little bit of trouble on defense at the start. Not, nothing major. Just, yeah, he wasn't at his complete best. The first turnover that he had, he was doing the probe dribble, you know, kind of dribbling into the lane or dribbling around the lane and looking for what the defense is doing. The ball went off of his leg, and he felt that the ball went off of the Detroit defender's leg. That's just a, a fluke play. I don't know. Maybe it did go off the Detroit guy's leg. I'd have to watch the replay. Jeremy was pretty convinced that it went off the Detroit guy's leg. So, look, that, that happens every now and then. And he could have been a little bit more focused at the, at the start of the game. But, again, I mean, these are extremely minor things. It was no... It was nothing, basically. Okay. Uh, first assist was the Tarek Black. And then and then we started. Now, now we're into the second quarter, late into the second quarter. At this point in time, Jeremy Lin has zero points. And he's shot zero times. 
and Jordan Clarkson was doing well. And so what was happening on Twitter were Lynn fans were starting to get upset and they were starting to get anxious because this looked like this was going to be the third game in a row where Jeremy Lynn scores in double digits and it doesn't look like he's, he's going all out, which is completely false in my opinion. And so people are, they're not happy. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. This is has to do with, a lot of it had to do with how Detroit was playing defense, and a fair amount of it had to do with how Jordan Clarkson was playing. Jeremy let Jordan Clarkson do his thing because Jordan was playing well. Detroit was has one or two shot blockers in Drummond and Monroe. Uh, I mean, Monroe's not a great shot blocker, but he's he's there. He's big. He'll stop you on drives. They were getting back in transition defense, which meant it was hard for Jeremy to get breakout layups. And they were blitzing or trapping Jeremy Lynn coming off screens. So there, there wasn't a lot of openings for Jeremy. And Clarkson's playing well. Jordan Hill's shooting well. In order to be a good teammate, which Jeremy, I mean, Jeremy's a good teammate, but in order to fit within an offense properly, which I think Jeremy is still working on as a player, you have to defer to guys that are, are playing well. You have to let the guy with the hot hand keep shooting. So let Jordan Hill keep shooting and let Jordan Clarkson keep running the offense. And that's what Jeremy did. He wasn't being passive. It's just there wasn't any obvious opportunities for him. And so he was not forcing things. That's smart basketball. It's important for for us as fans to be able to understand the difference between playing smart and playing passive. Jeremy wasn't playing passive in the first half. He was just playing within the flow of what was happening in the game. I have no problem with it at all. The only mistake he made in the first half, in my opinion, was the turnover. And that was just, again, that was a fluke more than anything else. Okay. So we go to halftime. Detroit 50 to 49, one point ahead. Jeremy Lynn has zero points. He has three rebounds, one assist. He is taking no shots and no free throw attempts. Okay. And his plus minus is a minus one. His efficiency is three, which is pretty low. And he, but he only played 11 minutes, so it's not like he'd gotten a whole bunch of minutes. So, like I said, Lynn Anxiety Brigade is in full force at halftime. Nails are being bitten. Brows are being wiped of sweat. Uh, regrets are being uttered. Byron Scott being denounced, and so on and so forth. Let me say something about Byron Scott here, too. Two things. Number one, Byron Scott kept Jeremy Lin in for the entire fourth quarter, which was smart. Number two, this is not something everybody's going to pick up on. What has Jeremy Lin said since the All-Star game? He's, he has played a little bit more. He's played more pick and roll, which he likes. He likes playing with Ryan Kelly because Ryan Kelly spaces the floor. And we all know he likes playing with Ed Davis. Well, who was he playing with tonight a lot? Ryan Kelly and Ed Davis. And you got to give credit to Byron Scott for that because he did that. I don't think that was an accident. I think that was done on purpose to help Jeremy out a little bit. I'm not saying it was only done for Jeremy, but Byron understands that Jeremy likes playing with those two guys. Obviously, Ed Davis is his pick-and-roll partner. And Ed had four fouls. That's probably why I didn't play more. That would be my guess. Oh, I'm not sure about that. And Ryan Kelly's the, the shooter. So if you you got your pick-and-roll partner to, to dunk, to, to you can lob dunks to and pass for dunks, and you've got the guy that's going to pull the defense away from the rim so that you can drive. So give Byron Scott credit for that. As much as we put him down, that personnel grouping – is good. Now, somebody said on Twitter, well, it doesn't matter if Ryan Kelly is playing with Jeremy unless Ryan Kelly is playing power forward. Uh, yeah, th th there is a point there. There is a point there. I know what you're saying. In other words, 
if Ryan Kelly is playing power forward, then he's taking a big man away from the basket. So the lane is more clear. If Ryan Kelly is playing small forward, then the small forward defender is going to be on the perimeter anyway. That is true. But still, the entire defense has to gravitate a little bit more away from the rim when you have a real shooter on the court like Ryan Kelly. Ryan Kelly is a much better shooter than Wesley Johnson is. So if I were Jeremy Lin and I wanted spacing on the floor, I would rather play with Ryan Kelly than Wesley Johnson. And again, to be fair, I think that's what Byron was thinking as well. Okay. Now we move on into the second half. Um, okay. Jeremy came into the game with four minutes and 54 seconds left in the third quarter. And this is when the Jeremy Lin show was about to begin up to this point in time. As I said, he hadn't done a lot. Uh, he had blown assist and assist for fouls. Nothing was much was showing up on the stat sheet, except he was rebounding well, which is nice. Uh, that was showing up, but not a lot else was showing up. So with four minutes and 54 seconds left, he comes in for Wayne Ellington, who had just shot an air ball. At that point in time, Lakers were up 59-52. to 52. Jeremy got a defensive rebound. Then he had another blown assist. Late into the third, he had a nice assist to Jordan Hill for a jumper. And then he just like he just started making things happen. He had an assist. He had another rebound. He got fouled. He had an assist for a foul. He got fouled twice uh, for four fr- free throws. And then he finally had his first shot attempt of the game very late in the third quarter. He had a catch-and-shoot three-pointer from almost straight on top of the arc and he was also about four feet behind the line so at the end of three quarters Jeremy had six points five rebounds two assists so he had gone from zero to six points in just bang bang in five minutes five and a half minutes or whatever it was and his efficiency in that quarter was eight which is big particularly for only playing fewer than six minutes the score at that point in time, 67 to 61 for the Lakers. Now we head to the fourth quarter. As I said, Jeremy played the entire fourth quarter. He missed a shot that was blocked by Anthony Tolliver. I, yeah, I think that's who it was that blocked it. Then he had two blown assists. Then he had a nice pass to Ed Davis for an assist. And I made a note after that that says Jeremy Lynch turning it on now. You could tell... Uh, I think Jordan had already gone out of the game. Jordan went out of the game, and I, I didn't mention it. He went out of the game late in the third quarter, I believe. He got his fourth foul, and that was the last time he was coming to the game. As soon as Jordan went out of the game, Jeremy totally turned it up. And now at the beginning of this fourth quarter, when it's his normal rotation to play point guard, he really turned it up. And you could see that he just won't impose his will in the game and take over, and that's what he did. Then I made the note that says, yes, he's learning to pace himself, learning to pick his spots so he can rest a little bit more. He can let his team have a little bit more more shots, more opportunities. Remember Nick Young saying that Jeremy should have shot less, and we know boneheaded and all that stuff. Well, now he's, he's figuring all that out. This is a mature, maturing process, and he's progressing, and it's clear to see, and it's it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Okay. Then, uh, soon after the, the Ed Davis hook shot that Jeremy assisted, then he, he passed the ball on a fast break for Ed Davis for a dunk, which was just a great play. Jeremy easily could have hogged the ball there and tried to shoot it himself, but he did not do that. Then, heading in the middle of the fourth, he was fouled again. Two more free throws. So that was, I think, up to six free throws already. Then he had his second and final turnover of the game. What happened was the the screen or the pick and roll that was going on at that time was double teamed. Jeremy went to make a bounce pass through the double team, but it hit one of the Detroit players in the foot. Many times that'll be called a kicked ball, but sometimes they don't call it a kick because the defender doesn't actively try to kick it. 
if the defender does not actively try to kick it, it's not a, a kicking violation. So it just hit the foot, went off the foot, and it became a turnover. It's just basically Jeremy's two turnovers tonight were, were pretty much bad luck, essentially. Then he went to try to get another foul. He drove on the left side of the basket, he, uh, shot a banker off the glass, but he did not get the foul. And it turned out that Detroit went back down the other way and hit a three-pointer. So it was kind of a tough little sequence there for Jeremy. But he was in the mindset of draw fouls, be aggressive and draw fouls, and dish the ball. So he was full attack mode at this point in time. Okay? And then he had a nice defensive play. Then he had another assist for a foul. Then he got fouled once again in transition two more shots, which I think took his total up to eight. And so this was, he had eight free throws within the flow of the game. This wasn't at the end of the game when he was just getting fouled and Detroit was desperate. No, this was all within the flow of the game. Right now at this point in time, when he got his seventh and eighth free throw attempts, it was 81 to 74 for the Lakers. So the game was still in balance and there was more than four minutes left in the game. Then he missed the lefty layup. That's like he said, he wants to work on finishing better at the rim. He'll get that. It it just, this is where floaters, runners, it's one of the things he can work on more this summer. And I'm sure that he will. And it'll improve. He's been good at it before. He'll get good at it again. And and sometimes you're just going to miss. Then he had two nice defensive plays. Then he had another assist for a foul to Wesley Johnson. And he had his fifth and final assist, uh, assist to Jordan Hill for a jumper that pretty much was the, the, the closing dagger for the game. Then he had a, just an awesome defensive rebound that he got in between Greg Monroe and Andre Drummond. It's just hilarious. He, here he is. The ball kind of comes between those two to him, and then he gets fouled by both of them, or one of them. Two more free throws. He makes both of them. And then... Uh, He got two more shots still, and he, I don't know, he, yeah, he made both of those. So, finishes the game, as I said, 12 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists. There's really, I can't say anything about the turnovers, because they were flukes. You can't really say anything about his shooting. One of his shots was blocked, and I think the other two were missed layups. I mean, you know, one was, was trying to get a foul. And the other one was just a miss where he was going in between the big men and it missed. I actually think it became a Lakers offensive rebound and score. So nothing was bad here. I love the way he played in this game. He was smart. He was selective. He played with balance. He conserved his energy properly. He bounced back. If you think that the last two games were were bad. He was clearly the best Laker on the court in the second half, in my opinion. There's no question about that. He was the leader of the team. He was directing the offense. He made big defensive plays. He got big rebounds. He played great. So this is another in the 11-game sequence that began in the Portland game. After he had the five turnovers in Denver and everybody was on him, including me, where Jeremy has turned the page in his career. This isn't a small-time thing. This isn't about the Lakers. This is about his development as a basketball player. And now he has he is in the process of going to a different level. This is enormous. It's like I said, it's not about... This year, this is about him next year and in the years to come. And this is where the work is being done. This is where the discipline's coming in. This is where the advances are being made. I couldn't be any happier. And like I said, I would have been happy just after the first half. But his PER is going to go up. He got the win. He helped bring home the victory. If you were concerned because of the last two games and the doubters, they're silenced, everything looks great. So that's it. I mean, it just uh, it couldn't be any better than that. So we move on to the next game. 
and that next game will take place here in the United States on, let's see here, Thursday, March 12th, so two days from now. It will be against Jeremy's old team, one of them, the New York Knicks, who are struggling like crazy. And uh, the Lakers will actually probably be favored in that game. In fact, I'm basically certain they'll be favored in that game. The Knicks are just horrible. They're just awful. And they're in free fall a little bit right now. So the Phil Jackson resurrection uh, hasn't happened yet. Again, Thursday, March 12th, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 7.30 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, and I finally found out what time it is now actually in Asia after we in the United States turned our clocks forward. Uh, so that means the game will take place 12 hours from here on the East Coast, so it'll take place 10.30 a.m. in China, Taiwan, and the Philippines. Look, the Knicks are on a good team, so... If you want Jeremy to do well, I'm sure there'll be an opportunity for him to do some things against the Knicks, but I'm content. It doesn't matter to me if it's a Boston scoring explosion or if it's a game like tonight or it's a game like Memphis where he's kind of dialing it back. He's playing smart. What I want, as I said, and I know Brent Yen said it on Twitter, keep the turnovers low. Don't force play within the offense, be efficient. And that's exactly what he's doing, and that's what he's been working to do in all 11 of the 11 previous games. Sometimes it's not as successful. Sometimes, you know, the two of the games he's had three turnovers. Okay. Well, one of the games he had also had eight assists. The other game he had five assists. You're not always, it's not always going to be great, but he's, He's approaching it the proper way. And that's why I'm happy. That's why I'm happy and content. It doesn't matter. Stats are just a... The stats are whatever they're going to be. If you play the right way, everything else will work out. Jeremy Lin is playing the proper way right now. He's playing in a way that's going to seriously progress him as a basketball player and incredibly help his career so i could not be any happier at all okay thumbs up thumbs down your comments below thanks to gary chen for the artwork you're looking at right now we'll include gary's facebook information in the video description below the video player will also include information so you can go check out highlights of this game and how you can come join the conservative new media facebook group as well as come and follow us on twitter where we love to interact with everybody we'd love to have you come and follow us there We follow just about everybody back. So, uh, I mean, why would I I not want to follow somebody who follows me? I mean, that's kind of the way I look at it. Once again, I am PFE, Paul F. Villarreal, the silent NBA expert here late in my apartment trying to be courteous of my neighbors. Thanks a lot for watching Conservative New Media. We strive to be the number one Jeremy Lin YouTube fan channel. Uh, I forgot to do the woo. I totally forgot about that tonight. Sorry about that. Hopefully those of you that have stayed with this broadcast long enough will get to enjoy that. Uh, I know many people, I'm sure, will tell me that I forgot it at the beginning of the video, and it's true, I, I did. Great game. Great game. Uh, team wins. Jeremy Lins, the, the hero, carries the team down the stretch and leads the team, and he did it in a smart, efficient way. This is huge. This is huge, the way Jeremy's playing right now. I'm telling you, this is going to pay off in ways that that are going to be gigantic down the stretch for Jeremy. So I love it. we got 19 games left this season. Let's move on to the New York game and see what we can do in that game. Have a great night, a great day, wherever you are around the world when you watch this video. Take care. We will talk to you again soon.